I was born in Israel. I was born with the state of Israel. I was born in a city called Haifa and lived there till I was 18. This is where I started. This is where my first year in school was. At that time, there were no Arabs in the class. But today in Reali school, there are Arabs, there are Jews, there are Muslims, and there are kids. Right? <laughs> Until I was 18, my parents would never take me to Jerusalem, our capital, because they said it's too dangerous. And only in 67, when I turned 18, it was my first time ever. And I was so amazed, because all of a sudden I saw Christians, Muslims, and Jews going to a market, arguing about uh, tomatoes, giving tips to each other about where is better to shop. No one, in, immediately, nobody talked about the conflict. I think the changes in life of becoming a parent, becoming a wife, becoming divorced, becoming a widow, then becoming a grandmother, these are all big changes. But there's one thing that didn't change, and that's my voyage. I think my mother's dream was that I will have a good profession. I'll be a teacher, I'll be a psychologist. At that time, I didn't even know I had a choice to say yes or no. I wanted to be an actress, I wanted to be in art, but that was not considered a profession. And most of us at that time in life did exactly what our parents advised us to do. I left my kids, who were grown up, but I did it. I followed a dream. People thought, I'm going out of my mind. You leave your house, you leave your business, you follow a dream, and I said, yes, it's now or never. And I remember my time at Lee Strasberg as one of the most amazing voyages where most important is I learned who I am. Hosting a show was fun was nice, but after three years, I decided in the peak that it's time to go on, time to change. Don't be afraid to change. Action. And I'm directing, actually, a movie on a script that I wrote. Cut. In 2008, when Israel celebrated its 60th anniversary, I just wanted to give one little gift as a citizen of Israel and as a Jew to my people. And when I say my people, we are 14 million people all over the world. We are 7 million who live now in Israel, seven others live in the diaspora. We are one. So I initiated a little broadcast. I found the one thing that is in common, and that's the Hatikva. It's the song of the Jewish people. And in 2004, it became the national anthem of the State of Israel. So in this very square, in 2008, thousands of people came here and sang the Hatikva, while simultaneously it was sung in different Jewish community in real time together. Would you believe it? We even have a Guinness World Record the most people singing national anthems simultaneously. And to whom was it given? It was achieved by different groups across the world who sang Hatikva with the aim of bridging linguistic and cultural gaps of Jewish people. And I'm thinking this is the one gift I gave to my people as the founder of the Live Hatikva Initiative. What is your initiative? I realize that Every young man in the world has a unique song. The song he learned in school, the song he learned at home, the song that strengthened his identity and sense of belonging to his own country. It's his national anthem. So why not create a worldwide format that unites all of us in the universe? Live Anthems is a first of its kind internet format which aims to bridge linguistic and cultural gaps, 
by giving teenagers from around the world the chance to express themselves by singing their own national anthem. It's time for my generation to think about the legacy. And my legacy, not just to my four children and grandchildren, but to my country and the neighborhood I live, which is the Middle East. What am I leaving behind? The conflict, I was born to the conflict and lived there through my whole life with wars and bloodshed. And this is the 21st century. And it's not important who owns this building or that stone or the other stone. And whether you're a Christian, you're a Muslim or a Jew, it's important is it, do you have a good quality of life? Are you educating your kids? Are you well fed? And yes, we can do it. We have everything going for us and all we need to share in the family of the Middle East is our knowledge in how to, pre to prevent diseases, to have better food, nobody should be hungry, everybody should be educated, exposed to culture, technology, good medicine, and fun in life. And of course, a good hummus, oh boy. So I'm calling my generation. This is the 21st century. We grew up mostly in the 20th century. We can have a better 21st century by sharing, by connecting, by bridging linguistic and cultural gaps. It's so easy. Each one of you just try to do one little thing like I'm doing now, and instead of writing it on a post on Facebook, talking to you. Thank you.